guys, what's up? Are you? We all know that Tevat is someday gonna drown in water because Celestia is just too insecure. But what we might not have realized is that Fontaine might be where Celestia used to be. So welcome to another video of me drowning in water. Today we'll be going over every bit of the 4.0 special program, how it relates to the currently known lore, what it may mean for the story, and what will likely happen later down the line. As usual, timestamps in the description. Let's get started. Fontaine's prophesied flood was said to leave Fontaine drowned in water, and only the Hydro Archon will be left standing. This is called the Diluvian Period, and everyone in Fontaine is trying to prepare or even deny that from happening entirely. Fontaine's elevated design seems to be because of some sort of mysterious power, and the devs mention it as the biggest difference to other regions, and that the Diluvian Period's inspiration was taken from stories of the Great Flood. This flood is likely connected to the Judge that the people speak of, as well as the waterline crisis of Fontaine's rising sea level. Judgment makes me think of Enconomias before the sun and moon. The year of the Ark's opening could possibly be the primordial one creating Celestia, and as long as the people didn't commit sin, they would be allowed to enter the Ark. But humanity was doomed from the start, so once the second one came, Enconomia and possibly all of Tevat was swallowed by water, and the rest is history. Farina's scene is interesting because she's surrounded by what seems like parts of the firmament from the login loading screen, which makes me think that Fontaine is where Celestia was, and the land covered in water is the land left by Celestia after rising to the sky. Something else I want to point out is Dainsleaf's quote, some say a few are chosen and the rest are dregs, but I say we humans have our humanity. Putting that line into perspective of the Ark in Before the Sun and Moon, Tevat might be the Ark that humanity would prosper on, but humans were sinners from the start, so only few were chosen to ascend and be saved, while the rest, well, you know what happened. Hence the huge chunk of missing land and Fontaine's elevated landscape. We'll talk about it in detail on a different video though. Researchers as well as inventors from the Research Institute of Fontaine are creating an alternate source of energy, with the latest we know of Edwin Eastinghouse who was dabbling in something called Archeum to solve the water line crisis. Although his study led to the explosion incident in the research institute, as well as all of his experimental data being somehow still intact and even weirder, was renewed. Based on the second chapter of the story quest revealed, it seems like rain is the main phenomena that initiates this crisis, followed by a flood and submerging all of Fontaine, like Enconomia and much of the world. And stopping that rain will be our objective to keep Fontaine and, well, to that from flooding. Stopping a phenomenon like rain leads me to either a man-made rain device, or maybe a divine rite that requires us, or even Farina and Nouvellet, to interact with the divines in some way. If Fontaine today were actually to be flooded, then all of the vent would need to be flooded first, meaning this flood prophecy happened before, which we have multiple instances of aquatic floods and buried civilizations. Enconomia is the best possible recorded evidence. Some of the fauna and monsters like the Emperor of Fire and Iron, the ancient ruler of the Aberrants, witnessed Fontaine before the first Diluvian period, as well as fossils and creatures and buried locations such as Liwa's Chasms, Inazuma's Watatsumi, or even Mondstadt's Pylos Peak. Granted, these were done by Orobashi, the Sun Chariot, and Venti's Terramorphing, the old world and its history is still buried as a result of more past calamities or or maybe submerging. Whether or not Tevat has had more than one already, or that this first Diluvian period happened way before the previous Archon's rule, or even all the way to the Seven Dragon Lords, we can't say. Fontaine's justice isn't exactly a straightforward system. Everything and everyone in the region isn't only enthusiastic about it, but they rely on it to keep Fontaine alive and running. In the court of Fontaine, justice has three main uses a right to uphold, an energy to maintain, and a form of entertainment. As the land of justice, Fontaine has to uphold its firm belief and confidence in that concept. In Fontaine, everything revolves around justice, and must be integrated into anything and everything. A form of energy is 
kind of hard to grasp, but justice itself is an indispensable means to obtain energy. And that energy is what powers all of Fontaine, from its mecha and work robots, all the way to the simpler things like lights and electricity. From that statement alone, you can see why Fontaine basically needs justice. A form of energy is linked to what we previously know about Fontaine's clockwork energy source. This energy source has two forms, Yuma Osha for working energies and indemnitium for everyday use. I'll talk about these two energies in a bit. For now, let's talk about entertainment. Fontaine also sees justice as a form of entertainment, which links to Fosalor's interest in the spectacle of the courtroom, as well as the recent theories about law and entertainment being put together. Looking for the next twist and creating the greatest drama in the court is what Fosalor wishes to find, and that entertainment, that spectacle, is how Fontaine's power source is generated in such amounts to power an entire region, and is why Fontaineans believe in justice so much. What I also believe is you hitting the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and clicking on the bell for more content. Thank you! Now let's talk about how to make energy and how trials are exactly done. The Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal Wow. An oratrice or orator means a public speaker, and in Fontaine, this oratrice is likely the main apparatus used in trials. It seems to be the only way that Fontaine produces indemnitium. The oratrice has its own consciousness, can form accurate sentences, and is the apparatus used to harvest the belief of Fontaineans in justice. This begs the question, however, what would be Nouvellet's job in all this? Seeing Nouvellet move the trials around, his job as the chief justice isn't only to come up with the final verdict and judging innocent from guilty, but also to arbitrate the theater's flow. Remember, justice is both a law and a form of entertainment. You can think of this situation as Nouvellette being the judge and the oratrice being a jury of sorts. A proper judicial system, but with a twist of theater and entertainment. The Gardamax on the trial itself seems like we'll be getting a mix of both trial and battle as a form of theatrics. And seeing Child pop into the scene and fighting the mechas while jokingly speaks of the trial pushes this notion even more. Archie is Fontaine's clockwork source of energy. Same as Indemnitium, invented by a lane guillotine, it has two forms, Numa and Oshia. Fontaineans specifically have the ability to interact with it with specific alignments that they have, and various interactions with Numa Osha can lead to different effects and results. Numa Osha takes its energy from the environment of Fontaine, and is often used on workforce mechs like the Mecha Guard, Exploration Mechas, and Service Mechas. This this form of energy is different from indemnitium, which creates energy from Fontaine's belief of justice. But this raises questions to what energy it takes from the environment, with the closest source being ley lines. Alain Guillotine also researched ruined construct energy and abyss energy in his trips to Sumeru, which seem to take energy from ley lines to power them, as well as the abyss's near perpetual type of energy. So these mechas are possibly the closest to ruined constructs that Kanria and even the Desert Folk's primal constructs have. The most artistic of these Numa Osha mechas is the Ice Wind Suite, a gift from the Fontaine Institute displaying the combination of both elegance and technology, which was later converted to a combat mecha that collects battle data and is likely fed to the various defenders and sentries of Fontaine. Linny and Lynette create the perfect dynamic of both attention and sleight of hand in and out of the theater. Linny is the attention seeker of the three siblings. His pursuit of novelty in entertainment is something that both he and the audience shares. His talent for entertainment is something that he strives to refine with every performance. His story quest is named The Forgotten Thief, which is even more interesting when you put Arlecchino into the mix. Lynette is the assistant in the shadows of both the theater and on the streets. A silent observer and a professional magician, her heightened senses makes her feel that someone is watching with an unknown gaze and then it completely disappearing. Preminent is the most distant to the theater, but his interests lie in the most interesting aspects of Fontaine, topography and history, which speaks volumes when you consider Fontaine's underwater ruins, the first diluvian period, and the flood judgment prophecy. His fascination for the so-called underwater museum is also of great interest since we all know that the old world is underneath the vat's surface. Lenny and Lynette often perform at a restaurant hotel, 
the Hotel de Board and are the main performance act of that establishment. But they'll be performing their first act in the Opera Epicles, which is where trials and or theater plays are held, as well as the main place that Nouvellet and Farina will most likely be. So this scene here is where we'll see the first top of the line act and tricks that the twins might have and where we'll find out what is really behind Fontaine's Law and Justice Theatrics. The Oceanids and Fontaine were once exiled and lived on their own after Fosalor wore the mantle of the God of Justice. The Oceanids were once given a mission by the previous Hydro Archon to connect the world just like water connects a river. Sadly, she fell while fighting the Abyss in the Cataclysm 500 years ago. The Dendro Archon Rukadevata kept her remaining consciousness in the Pool of Amrita and created the Harvest Token. The Harvest Token then became the seal that kept the Terror of the Abyss intact within Sumeru. Weirdly enough, we still haven't heard about the previous Hydro Archon from Fosalor, Nouvellet, and even the people and the devs. But that's something that they can hopefully reveal once we get there. Demoiselle Navia is not only the president of the Spina di Rasula, or Rose Thorn, she's also a detective and is currently working on an important case looking for the help of the Traveler in the 4.0 story quest. To my understanding, she's possibly a member, and maybe even the head, of the Marishuse Phantom, a detective force of Fontaine that reports directly to the Udex, or Judge, Nouvellet. Marishuse, in French, is a corps in charge of military policing and justice that later extended into civil responsibilities. It's worth mentioning that Fontaine currently has three main aquabus lines. The Clementine, linking the Romaritine port to the court of Fontaine. The Callus line, that originally connected to the Fontaine Institute, or better known as Freaky, which is likely destroyed due to an explosion incident with Edwin Eastinghouse. And lastly, the Navia line. Synonymous with her name, it's the only line that leads to the Erinus district. Erinus is taken from the three goddesses that swore vengeance on those who took a false oath or did evil, which I think is another take on the Moon Sisters, but this time it's Fontaine's perspective. The Erinus district is where the opera Epicles is located and likely where the Hydro Archon and the Chief Justice will be holding their trials. So technically, Nouvellet or Farina can lock down that part of Fontaine if a conflict were to rise. Nouvellet is known as the Udex, or Judge of Fontaine, who feels more like the one who orchestrates a performance into a trial, calling the shots on who is guilty and who isn't while maintaining the audience's attention and keeping their belief of justice in check. Nouvellet likely makes sure that the Oratress provides ample amounts of power for Fontaine to stay alive. Pursuit of drama and theatrics of trials would mean that real justice and concern for the people will often be disregarded for the sake of harvesting energy. But Fontaine is in dire need of this energy that is made through quote-unquote justice. Elaine Guillotine, who invented this form of energy, although the greatest technological advancement so far, it also becomes a crutch to Fontaine and skews the very idea of justice itself. Maybe Nouvellet is Elaine Guillotine? He seems keen on keeping the oratress in running condition, pushes for making justice into entertainment instead of looking for a better alternative. We can also say the same with Forina, but she seems to be too ignorant or, dare I say, too young to understand justice from entertainment. You'd think that the god of justice herself would know the real meaning of what she stands for the most, and I'm 100% sure that she wouldn't stand for this near-abominated and ridiculed form of justice. Justice. Then again, we don't know about Farina's ascent to Archonhood and what happened 500 years ago after the previous Hydro Archon's fall, apart from Elaine Guillotine inventing this justice energy 400 years ago. Even Child thinks of Fontaine's justice system as a joke. The person who for some reason isn't Fontaine, but one of his reasons could be to find another assailant to challenge, likely Clarinde, who holds the rare profession of dualist champion and has a complicated relationship with Navia, likely a pressing case that must be solved. The Melusine race is an interesting bunch of furry creatures that have a strong sense of justice, not to mention their powerful sight and ability to see the unseen. You might say they look like police people that keep Fontaine in order, but they also look like conductors. As for what sort of justice they may have a strong sense on, I mean, you could look at these furry bundles of justice and just think what is going on inside their head. We know that the Steambird is the biggest newspaper outlet of Fontaine, but where is it? 
It's the most prominent and most talked about branch of Fontaine, yet we haven't seen or heard the devs mention it in better detail. Is the steam bird not a main branch of Fontaine? Bonus entries sound like a big leap for Fontaine's popularity, yet we haven't heard much from the steam bird outside of her lore and some news here and there. Charlotte left Fontaine because she seems to have exposed someone important. So is the steam bird being held down? Are they trying to find the truth and being kept away from it? Or are they a sort of paparazzi that look for the next drama and are running from the law? Finally, Arlecchino. The devs mentioned that other characters characters will also appear in Fontaine, but will be in future versions. So maybe we'll see her popping in and out of the story, but won't be the center of attention like Skara, Mush, and Dottori. 4.0 is likely more about Fontaine itself than its interactions with the Fatui, similar to 3.0 and 3.1's flow. So we'll likely know about the final feast as well as possibly Piero's frenzied banquet in the later patches. And there we go, basically everything I could pour out regarding the latest 4.0 special program. I do hope you guys enjoyed it because I always love putting the old lore with the entire special program together when new ones come out. Now, I won't take too much of your time in this video because it's almost like 15 minutes. So as always, like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!